Good morning, guys. It is 4.30 in the morning. We're about to take off on a little bit of an adventure. We're heading to Maine. Well, we just passed into Vermont, and uh, it's beautiful. It's, it's really quite nice here. Um, left. None of the leaves have changed color yet. It's still very green, but it's very beautiful terrain here. Some windmills in the distance. That's quite nice. Hogback Mountain. So we're in Vermont, um, crossing into New Hampshire in a second, and then into Maine. Uh, it's been good so far, real beautiful. Uh, my mom's been doing a lot of driving. I've been working on the computer, enjoying the scenery, and uh, yeah, making good time. Good gas mileage too, right? Yeah. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Awesome. Okay guys, it is 6 a.m. about to leave the finest one and a third star hotel that we were able to find in New Hampshire. And uh, gonna go get the trailer, pick up the car. Okay, we got our U-Haul trailer. Now we're heading out, gonna go put the car on it. So here's our first view of the vehicle. Uh, it's got a big dent there. Uh, it's a bit of a bummer. We knew about this seam. Still attached there. The control arm hasn't come through the body yet. Upper 91, 9091 seal there. Beam rust. How's the back bumper? Of course, of course, of course, of course. Is it broken? They're always broken. Looks solid enough here. What? There's a hole in the back seat. Oh, I don't want this car. We're not gonna. In here we have this. This would need reupholstered. Well. Here it is, we looked it over, we came, we saw, we conquered. This is not the right bus for me. So it's uh, it's going to someone else. So now we're just in vacation mode in Kenny Monkport, Maine. Stopped to get a lobster, getting a two pound lobster. It's gonna be delicious. Pound lobster and the two pound lobster came with a hammer. Yes. Labor Day <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, we just had an awesome lunch before leaving Maine. Uh, stopped off, got some lobsters with my mom. She's driving right now. And a uh, little change of plans. Um, you know, they say whenever one door closes, another one opens. And we chose not to buy that bus, but we found another one. And so. We're driving some distance and going to go look at another one. And it's pretty amazing to think that I thought, hey, let's just look and see what other buses are out in this area. And I think we might have a good lead on one. So I'll show you some cool things soon, I hope. Okay guys, well today's bus escapades got weird. We went to go get the Burgundy bus. It didn't work out. We thought we were just gonna vacation our way home. We checked the listings for any other buses in the region, and we found this one. And like they say, when one door closes, another one opens. I now own a uh, 1987 Synchro Westie. So that's how my day's gone. How's your day? Good morning, everyone. So we just left our hotel, ran to Harbor Freight and Home Depot, got a bunch of tools and wood and things we might need. And today we're going to extract the bus. This is going to be an interesting process because it, uh, we don't know, well, probably doesn't roll and it has to fit through a space that's probably about one to two inches wider than the car is. So it's gonna be an interesting day. Luckily, I've got a friend coming to help and we'll see how this goes. 55,000 actual miles on it. That's cool. Um, the, as I, I think I shared with you that I uh, began um, conversion to put the Subaru engine in, which was a big- Oh, you did big, start converting? Yeah, all the wiring is, is converted already. Oh, okay. So, 
so it's not. You and you have, have to go you have back the to Subaru you. exhaust and and engine bar. Yeah. Um, so that was a that was the goal. Yeah. And I never ended up um, completing it. I um, I'll, the, I'll just do it. Oh, I didn't think of this. The steering is going to be locked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To get it. That's right. It's uh, one thing to open. I mean, I'll break a window. Yeah. But well, this one is broken already. This okay. Right yeah, here. I'm saying the um, the actual steering wheel is going to be locked. Yeah. We're not going to be able to turn the wheel at all. Yeah. Yeah. We well, could, you could bash the window. I just got yeah, it anyway. I would just bash one of these corner windows because they're easy yeah. to replace, okay. and then reach around and open yeah. all the others. Yeah. The only way I can I can free up the steering is going to be to actually disconnect the steering shaft at the front wheels, so okay. that we have to move the wheels, but the steering wheel does not. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna make it real weird trying to maneuver. No problem. Just bought this car. It's got no keys. It's locked. So... Oh, it's more durable than I thought. Let's use the other side. Oh. <laughs> it's winning. It's... There we go. It's I over. broke it. It's broken. Over. Alright. Excuse me. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. that way. Ha -ha. Did you get it? Oh, hang on, hang on, don't move, don't move. And we're in! All right. The next issue is that there's not an engine in here, but the transmission is sitting on the jack. The whole car is sitting on jack stands. So before we can put the car down, we need to support the transmission. So we're gonna need to build a bar, put a ratchet strap down. I don't know. Could we be can't fun. get to this with the door closed because we don't have a key. I tried fiddling it with in here and I can't get it open. So this is the only access we have. We'll make it work. I don't think I've seen one that didn't rust right here. Yep, right that's from that go. the yeah. rust gets in there. Oh yeah. That's only on the, water, on the campers. The water gets there, huh? Yep, wow. only on the campers. Interesting. Yes. Our next plan is going to be chalking the front wheels real good. Then we're going to lift one side, pop this out, set this side down. It's still going to be sitting on that other side, so the suspension is going to have to make up for that 10 inches, which is going to look scary, but it can handle it. Then we'll go to the other side, same thing, jack it up bring it down and then she'll be on all four. I'm leaving the front tires flat for now so that it's less likely to try to roll. Yeah. Once we've got it down, that's what we'll do. That's what it's gonna do. Oh, that's so in the concrete. Step one complete. I would argue that that was going to be the tricky part. Well, one of the two tricky parts. That's going to be a tricky part too. Yeah. <laughs> two and this tire is already flat. So we're going to have to put some more air in it. It was at 35 PSI. So Kimmy, the Milwaukee inflator has got to work pretty hard today. This tire went dead overnight, but she's pumping it back up. I love this. 
this big dry rot crack. So, I don't know. Probably time to put the spare tire on. Yeah. <laughs> tire that was on there overnight and it's now yeah. it has a flat spot okay round two spare tire probably hasn't had air in it since the 1990s it's taken air hopefully this rolls steering wheel is it's currently not locked but it's going to lock because of the we don't have the key we're going to try taking the steering wheel off and taking the lock mechanism off putting the steering wheel back on so we can turn the wheel hopefully that things up securing all the many wires that are dangling and hoses and just figuring out a way to make things so they don't drag how's it going mom it's going good i'm on side two wouldn't it be great if that rear hatch opened oh yeah that's okay <laughs> this makes it more fun uh, it's off and the column plastic off the idea here is that if i turn this wheel it's going to engage a little lock a cam in here that you can't unengage without the key then so what we want to do is actually take this whole assembly off, pop it off so that it can't engage that, and then put everything else back on. That might work. solve the problem. See, this is off of that. See this? This is what locks the steering wheel. Because that hadn't locked yet, we were able to get this whole thing off. Now we can put the steering wheel back on these splines. Yeah, it'll move around that way, but we can turn the wheel. That's gonna be awesome. That's a game changer. Bill showed up with some VW keys he's got, and he's got one worn out one. We're hoping we can kind of get this rear hatch open with a couple of good. We're going to the worn out one now. Couple of good wiggles. This this key's his pride and joy. <laughs> it's old and worn out like me. It's a, a masked man with a special VW key. And gloves. And gloves. Yeah, he's not he's not a professional burglar, as far as we know. Taped up our uh, busted out window here. I don't know what hoodlum hit that with a sledgehammer yesterday, but they didn't even do it very professionally. And uh, other than that, we've got the steering wheel back on, but the column off. So we should be ready to roll other than whatever brakes are stuck on and whatnot. We've got some things zip tied up in here. And we just need to gain some clearance here. Our, our big problem here is that this distance is only like eight or 10 inches wider than the bus. So we wanna move this trailer over, just the nose of it even, over two feet. That'll give us a lot of, a lot more space. The problem is this thing's overloaded. The tires, even though they're full, look like that. So, so I definitely worry moving this at all, but if we can get this over two feet, it's gonna give us the access we need and okay, we should be So good. yeah, we, we moved that over every bit of a foot. That's that's gonna put us in really good shape. Well, let's get some not tension, but let's get the chain off the ground, and then we'll see. You start in the All tensioned up, and we're rolling forward, slow and steady. But she's moving. Oh, this is power windows. I didn't realize that. That's kind of sweet. I'm sure they're broken. Oh yeah, she's rolling. I can hear all the brakes creaking. It sounds like the Titanic in here. We'll give it a couple of these. Tap, tap, taps. Opposed to just croiling it from the backside. 
It's all gonna get taken apart. Yeah, oh yeah. That's, it's, whatever's there is gone. Well, no, probably not. That's, well, but I mean, fine. for yeah. pad-wise and stuff, that's gonna matter getting the coil on it. Yeah. But I'd still run the drums. Yeah, oh yeah, that cleans up though. It only, yeah. it only sucks up the coil with the pad. Okay guys, so we just sprayed a whole bunch of coil in through the uh, brake adjusters in the back because the brake drums are locked on. So we've been hitting them with a hammer, sprayed some coil. It's gonna ruin the brake shoes, but nothing else. It might free them up, so we'll see. Are you seeing that rear wheel moving No, nope, not at all. No, it's locked. It will. Or it doesn't. I don't know how much we care. <laughs> Let me just check that the parking brake is off. Rolling, man. Yep. Yep. That one move? I think it did. Oh, yeah, this one definitely did move. Sweet. That's a good move. Focusing the energy with the pad one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just thought of that. It's not Yay, that Bill. Part. I had to go get this. But... <laughs> I, I know I did a bay window one time, and we literally just got a 16-pound sledge and just started wailing on that center nut. And <laughs> it moved. We'll just pull the truck forward three feet, and that'll give us a little bit, you know. Um, because that chain fall only pulls three feet at a time. And then if this starts rolling, how are you gonna set? Oh, nice. Very good. Ship Safety first. all the greatest things. Safety <laughs> first. I'll pull that on. Yeah, we're gonna end up in this bush um, pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, well, we're... Whoa. <laughs> It wouldn't be a Vanagon extraction if we didn't have to cut down a tree. <laughs> so, Chip's over here pruning a bush, and we just backed the truck up again, took a link of chain out, um, giving it all we've got with the come along. We'll pull forward with the truck as much as we can, and then use the come along just for the tricky slow bits, because it only pulls four feet and it's pretty well, slow. We've made it about one bus length, so I don't know, what is that, about 18, 15 feet? Uh, and she's rolling. We've got all four wheels spinning now, which is good. Um, pruning some bushes here. <laughs> we kind of drove into it before we started pruning, but that's fine. We'll get through. Exciting news guys, the synchro is now out on the road and we can put it on the trailer. That was fun. It actually rolls now. We've got all four brakes freed up and ready to keep moving. What is this, Craig? Oh, this is a Subaru engine. It apparently comes oh with a Subaru God. engine. Oh my God. On a cart. Is that a blessing or what? Well, now they just have to lift it into it. Yeah, we don't have a great plan with where this goes or how to get it there, but we're going to pick it up and then. Do you think we can just buy the, 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 the cart and haul it behind the trailer? I think we probably can. Get it under the head. Yep. Ready? Yep. That's just a Volkswagen motor. I'm going to hop in. Yep. So it was plan Ready? C. <laughs> it's installed. Yeah, <laughs> it's installed. I lowered it myself. We also got a Subaru engine. I think it's an EJ22. Don't know anything about it, but it's installed. It's got a wiring harness and all the conversion bits, so that'll be good.
There we go. She's rolling. We're over. Let's uh, hang on, Bill. Yep. Let's stop there. Yep. Down backwards and stuff too. Yep. Woo! It's in. We'll count it. Little framework so it can't move. Just did it with some nails and some two by fours and a sawzall. And then we've got two redundant ratchet straps, one cradling the transmission, one picking up this uh, bolt through bolt here, the other one going around this axle. Then under here we've got a ratchet strap pulling back, we've got our safety chain back, we've got a safety chain forward, we've got the front wheel straps on, we've got the transmission in gear, we've got the parking brakes on, which we have tested and work. And we're in pretty good shape overall. Got the engine in. The engine is strapped down through the seatbelt bolts and pretty down. It should be pretty good. Uh, let's check our pop top latch. That's a good idea to check. And it's, it's good. That's not gonna come up. Other than that, we're in place. We'll probably lock the doors so that they don't go anywhere. And we've got this, which we built out of duct tape. Um, I have a slight concern about the sliding door opening, but it's not that big a concern. Just did not have power locks. And yeah, otherwise we're, we're good to go. She's sitting pretty level on the, on there. Truck's looking good. All the accessories in the back and I think we're going to head out. Okay guys, we're all loaded up attached to the truck ready to go journey okay, home guys time. the bus is loaded we're ready to go you ready to go ready to go awesome well it's homeward been fun bound. homeward bound it's what time is it it's three o'clock so fries on the back i mean it took us till three o'clock but i think we did pretty good we couldn't have done it without bill no bill, was bill essential. Uh, it's good that i randomly had a friend in this state from 10 years ago oh, God. thanks bill you're the best Let's so do we this. just made it to the booming metropolis of Bloomsburg, where we're going to spend the night, about four or five hours from home, most of Pennsylvania to go, but uh, the bus towed well, and that's as far as we could make it. It got pretty dark, so time to hang out, crash. It's been a long day of physical labor, so we'll get headed out tomorrow. And yeah, to, there's some ratchet straps to the back here pulling the suspension down. I think the back end was trying to walk a little bit, so now it's... A little more firmly planted really this is kind of a weird setup because it's only held by the front wheels there's no strappies for back here so we've got it held down it should make it Tells me enough right there. Yeah, it's not, it's not seized. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, if you went ahead and put the touch. Yeah, I mean the clutch and the, then he's probably got the, the adapter head. plate and the clutch is all on there. So he's probably got the head all redone. But still, I don't know. Here. Yeah. Got the Subaru engine out, and it looks like it has a new timing belt and all that. So it looks like it's got the reverse coolant manifold and everything. It's pretty much ready to go in. So we're building a box to sit it on so that we can wheel it around and build it up so it fits in that cart. My dad's pretty clever with this stuff. So now it's on a moving furniture dolly and it sits flat and we can fiddle with it and move it around and easy to move. Okay guys, we're gonna pop the top. I bet it hasn't been up in 25 years. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh she's roached. <laughs> Might need a nuke. It might, it might need a new top. It's not, it's not so good. No, it's not so good. Aww. The other side's just as bad. Is it? Yeah. It's just dry rot. It's just ruined. Whatever. We're gonna have to get a new one. Thanks for tuning in so far. It's been an adventure. 
I hope you've enjoyed it. I know I have. It's a crazy story, and it's only going to get crazier. So stay tuned here and check us out on Instagram, because over the course of the winter, we're going to build this car. I've done this a bunch of times before, but never quite one like this. This is going to be fun. Thanks, guys.